Hello, my name is Neil and this is my presentation about an adaptive speech assistant for autism spectrum disorder, leveraging generative computing and NLP. Introduction. My name is Neil Kumar and my mentor who has helped me a lot throughout this process is David. I'm from San Jose, California, and I chose this topic because one, I have an interest in computer science, and second of all, but more importantly, I, I know many people suffering from ASD, and I want to help them with their daily struggles in any way I can. And this project seemed like the perfect way to do so. The goal of this project is to develop a system to empower people with ASD to converse autonomously on their own and without significant assistance from their caretakers or parents. People with autism spectrum disorder encounter daily struggles and shortcomings regarding communication, especially in social settings. For example, some one person with ASD that I know cannot speak coherently on her own. But throughout years and years of conversing with her, we have developed a pseudo language through our lasting understanding of each other. And after I was able to finally connect with her, I found out how great of a person she is. And the goal of this project is to help people like her converse with anybody, even if they're, they have never talked to some other person before and don't have assistance from their caretaker. Currently, there are some solutions that try to remedy this problem. As you can see here, this is a physical PEX board. It has squares with pictures and, and words that describe these pictures. And with a bind, using a binder filled with these cards, a person with ASD can grab a card, put it on the Velcro to make sure that a sentence is formed. And that way you're able to communicate. But my friend, she has tried this. And one it is not convenient in social situations or out and about, but furthermore, these AAC apps often require good motor planning and attention, which reduces its effectiveness from those who might not possess those skills. Because of the digital age, some technologies have been used to try to fix problems with this old format. Here we see a digital PEX grid, which is better in many ways because it allows you with many more word options as it is all digitalized and a simpler interface which doesn't have to involve using a binder but there's problems in order to include all the things someone would want to say there are the there are folders on some of these buttons which create nested screens even for a neurotypical person this is complicated to navigate and especially for someone who has ASD, who doesn't have the greatest motor planning and attention, this makes the problem even worse. Now, throughout through people who I know personally, I've conducted surveys to find figure out problems with current apps that try to remedy issues with communicating with ASD. And even after all these apps and therapy, I'm still getting feedback saying that they can't make friends don't know how to engage with anyone in any meaningful ways. So through different surveys and external research, I've developed a system to remedy these problems. All of these quotes are real quotes that I've gathered from the community that lay out specific things that really need to be solved before an AIC app can be used widespread by the autistic community. If an act can reliably predict that a meltdown may happen, that would be great. Using 
digital technology, predictive techniques, and help children with ASD predict meltdowns and help their caretakers and parents deal with them more effectively. They can't make friends and don't know how to engage with anyone in any meaningful ways. An intelligent assistance system can make communicating more intuitive and less cumbersome for those who are using it. In regards to motor planning and attention, because we have access to different techniques and a more specialized control flow using computers and the web, we can accomplish a simpler control flow that allows users with ASD to learn how to use the app quickly and make sure that they're able to use all of its features to the best ability. Now, I have a prototype of this application where I can really demonstrate what each of these looks in practice. Here, I have the first screen, which is responsible for typing and actually making the sentences. As you can see, it is somewhat reminiscent of those other AAC apps. You have cards with the, with the words and pictures that represent those words. Now, if I click on this, it will go up here into the sentences, the sentence builder, which keeps all of the words. And as you can see on the bottom, it updates. This way, there is no need to filter word to consider words that are not even grammatically correct to put in a sentence. Furthermore, I have received feedback that learning a keyboard along with these communicative apps will be very useful as keyboards are used a lot in the real world and it's a great real world skill to learn. So along with these cards, I can use the keyboard to input to the sentences. And even though I'm using the keyboard here, the cards at the bottom will also update. Now, as you can see, there's another thing that I haven't talked about that you might have noticed. Here, we have tagging for each of the words that is part of speech tagging. Using different NLP technologies, I can add these. And what this lets us do is along with providing a more methodical way to build sentences, it makes sure that the person with ASD can develop a deeper sense of the English language as they are using them. Now, in order to say the sentence, you can click I submit. Might. And the browser will read this out and reset the rest of the UI to bring the sentence builder full circle. Now, on to the predictive techniques that we can leverage from this. Here, you can see a list of the past conversations. You can see the date and the time. This is extremely useful for caretakers and parents that can see the progress their child is making through this app, which can log everything. Now, in order to predict meltdowns, this app has a system where when you click predict, based on what's happened in the past, it can try to predict what might be happening currently. For example, if in the past at this time and this day, the person might have want to slept early. Using past sentences, this app can predict that and help to calm down any confusion. Now, since this is an app, we can do further customization. One very important one is the size of the interface. This slider controls how big the interface is and how big the cards are. Because if you have a bunch of cards filling the screen, that's great because it allows you to have more options. But it also gets confusing, especially for people with ASD who have more problems with attention. So you can simply slide this down. And as you can see here, the cards are bigger. This also allows this interface to be ported to phones and devices. Now, not only does, does this technology allow us to remedy all the problems that are currently apparent with ASD, it also gives us some future possibilities to work with. Through more sensors like sound, light, and inertial ones, we can gather richer data to enhance the experience and to help the person with ASD even more. For example, 
if the person with ASD is frustrated, I have noticed that for, for some of my family friends, whenever they get frustrated, they'll jump around, start moving around. So if I have access to inertial sensors, I can tell, okay, the tablet is shape, shaking violently. Surely they are frustrated. And this way, the app can also help to remedy that frustration and keep them calm. Now, if we can leverage other portable devices like a smartwatch or a health monitor, you can use stress metrics to integrate into the app. For example, if someone's heart rate is going up, that might we might be able to tell something from that. Or if it's if on an Apple Watch, you can see sleep schedule. If there's less sleep schedule, the app can take that into account in its procedures. Now, based on further advancements in predictive analytics, the app can use the past sentences and data to proactively prevent breakdowns even before they happened, based on what has happened in the past. And even more excitingly, the nature of this app allows its utility to extend to elderly people who have cognitive disorders and have trouble communicating because of how intuitive it is and the different features revolving around it. Thank you for listening to my presentation and thank you for your time.